Warning, this video will contain spoilers. If you haven't completed the game in this video, bugger off and play the damn thing. Feel free to come back and watch when you're done. If you see a spoiler you didn't want to see, don't shit, I did warn you. Greetings, one and all! My name is Dapper Dodo, and welcome to the debut episode of Dapper Dodo's Top 5 Show! Coming up today, we'll be focusing on the fantastic Resident Evil 7. Join me as we count down my Top 5 Resident Evil 7 moments. Number 5. Boo. Where did you find this guy? He found me on Craigslist! Now shut up and let me do my show! Number 5 on my list is the behind the scenes footage of Sewer Gators. It's pretty much a Ghost Adventures type show about going into abandoned houses and looking for spooky things. Sorry Zack, but it's true! Continuing through the prep for the investigation, one of the two men you are with vanishes. Is it ghosts? Has he gone to take a piss? Nobody knows! The only thing we know is that that bastard is in charge of payroll, so we need his ass. Just like in the movies, we blindly go looking for this guy. No hesitations, no quarrels, not even a glimpse of a maybe we should find help vibe. Nope! We just go looking for him. And as we know through every horror movie ever, that's bad. Searching the house, this arrogant prick we're stuck with stumbles upon a pull chain of some sort under the fireplace. Well, I say stumbles, however he actually makes a beeline for the damn thing. Kinda makes you wonder if he's in on it all along. Instead of doing the normal thing when a crawl space door opens and thinking, shit in hell, that looks bad, I'm getting help. We decide to crawl on in and investigate like the noble heroes we are. More like the dumb shits we are, actually. Discovering a ladder, Pricky McGee says, You first. And sends us down the bastard ladder. Fantastic! Long ladder, soggy ground, pitch bloody black darkness. What could go wrong, eh? And that's when you see it. Money Man just staring at a corner. What the fuck is he doing? Come on, buddy. Just, just need to... Oh my god! Bloody Nora! That's horrible, that! The moment that limp, lifeless body slides off that pipe, you realise something. As Ethan, you're going down that bloody ladder. This whole sewer gator sequence sets up the next part of the game beautifully. And that is why it's my number five. Number four. You, a one lucky summer bitch. You mean the viewers of this video? Well, of course they're lucky. They're getting this entertainment free and... Wait. Oh, okay, you meant him. The thing... Oh, okay, right. I know what you're thinking, guys. Two VHS tape scenes, one after the other? I'll admit I debated on whether to do that, but this scene is so damn fun. So damn fun. So that guy dragging us into the room is Lucas. Lucas is an inventor. He's also absolutely insane. And if you read the notes in the game, Lucas isn't even fully infected. Seriously, go back and play it again. He was also crazy as a child too. He locked another boy in the attic and wouldn't let him down. It is not confirmed that if the boy actually dies, but it's certainly implied. The whole idea behind this room is to put the candle in the cake. Water spurts out as you approach the cake, putting the candle out. Your job is to solve this puzzle and get that candle in the cake. With Lucas behind the puzzle, it's not going to be a painless escape. In fact, it's going to be a little brutal. The whole scene is eerie and spooky enough, but putting your hand in pooey water? Ew! Playing through this sequence really did remind me of Saw. 
No, not the god-awful games. I mean the first few films are not the shitty ones either. It gives you that tension like, will he make it out? And what the hell is wrong with Lucas? Capcom really delivered in this scene, and it shows that when they try, they really can do good work. More of this please, Capcom. The part with the clown was horrifying for me personally. The way he goes from an inanimate object to holding your arm and slicing the word loser into it is just... Oh, it's horrifying. I also really enjoyed the whole birthday party theme. It shows the dark and twisted humour that Lucas has. With the whole thing looking like it's ready to finally be done and you can finally put that candle in the cake and you can escape, well... Yeah. With human instinct setting in, we know fire is bad. Panicking, you run around the room searching for something to stop the burning. Something. Anything. But inevitably, you die. Ending with a very happy Lucas. Closing the video with the two words. Happy birthday. Yeah, fuck you too, mate. Number three. Well, shit. We're facing off with Jack. How wonderful. And by wonderful, I mean a load of bollocks. If ever there has been a I'm so fucked moment, it's this. We've seen what Jack can do. We've seen his powers. And we know this is going to be tough. And yet, for some reason, we know we can win. We don't even consider that it could be a you're designed to lose situation. Thank fuck it's not as well. As if it was, this moment wouldn't even be in this list. I hate having to purposely lose. Jack is strong, it's as simple as that. This fight will test you big time. And if you think Jack is tough in phase one, ho ho ho! Wait until phase two begins. Taking shots off on Jack's ugly mug will cause phase two to begin. When it does, Jack will head towards a chain link fence and say, Groovy. No, it most certainly is not groovy because he is now brandishing a double bladed chainsaw thingy. It is not groovy. Keep your Bruce Campbell lines to yourself. It's my job to say them. Luckily, there is a chainsaw left for you. However, it's a bog standard piece of shit chainsaw. Talk about an unfair advantage. After battling with Jack for a bit, his shoulder will inflate and pulsate. Hey up, you may think. But a chainsaw will be good here, won't it? Chainsaw the shit out of that bastard. It's the key to winning. Personal opinion, best boss fight in the entire game. Phases, good pacing, visible weak spots, clear goal, it's awesome. Even though this fight won't kill Jack, it will remove him from the game for a while. And the fight with Jack after that was pretty shit in my opinion. The end of this fight with Jack's legs walking without a torso, then falling to the floor was a good is he dead moment. Falling to the floor a final time ends the fight. Now that's fucking groovy, bitch. Number two. This is a job for sewer gators. Oh, wait, they're dead. Oh. Well, shit. Look, I know Eevee isn't a ghost, but the stuff that happens in this section of the game is very... paranormal. The eerie atmosphere sets the stage when walking into what I presume is Eevee's room. We're only there to get the arm thingy and we're greeted with spooky themes. Something about ghost children really freaks me out and yes, I know, not a ghost, but it still feels like it, damn it. 
Entering the room greets you with a sense of dread, like you're not supposed to be there. Flashlight flicker begins, and at one point Evie even says, Stay away. Ignoring her warning like the morons we are, we continue through the spooky haunted room. The teddy bear bit gets me every time. The way that mold just seeps from its mouth is ugh, creepy. Upon retrieving what we came for, we go to the exit to be greeted with a pair of children's legs poking from under the crawl space we've just snuck through. The music tenses up and the whole feeling goes from spooky to get me the fuck out of here now. Approaching Evie causes her to flee, however that's not it. She sends the moldy men after you. Quite a few of them actually. If you were to fight them, you'd lose a lot of ammo. You can avoid most of them though, so try and do that on your next playthrough. This is by far the creepiest scene for me in the entire game. It changes the pacing so fast, but damn it, it works. I'd have to say this is the exact reason why I picked this as my number two spot on this list. Number one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to reveal my number one moment in Resident Evil 7. Ethan, it's okay. It's okay, it's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. You shouldn't have done that! It fucking hurts! Mia was the reason we came to this place. Mia is the reason we're stuck here. Mia is the reason you lose your goddamn hand. It's a brutal and terrifying scene, a scene that leads you to believe you will be amputated for the whole game. Just look at it. She chainsawed your damn hand off. Now I know it's not Mia doing this, it's Evie controlling her, but still, damn! With your stub, you're left looking down at your severed hand. You can pick it up if you like, and look at the description of the hand. It's still warm. Lovely, just what I wanted to hear about my severed hand. To make matters worse, Mia is still out there. Regardless, only way out is through the attic. Finding that handgun was a realisation of what was going to happen, and it wasn't good. The whole reason I went there was to save Mia, yeah? Now I'm gonna shoot her face off? Fast forward a bit and you find Mia. With the chainsaw. Guess we have to fight her? So after unloading your gun into Mia's forehead a good few times, she finally starts to stumble. And then those haunting words pass her lips. <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Capcom, why? Big boss fight and then that emotional bombshell where Mia breaks through her infection. What the fuck, Capcom? Then if that wasn't enough, Jack stomps on you. Great. Well guys, that was my top 5 Resident Evil 7 moments. I really hope you enjoyed watching as much as I did making it. If you liked the video then be sure to leave a thumbs up, if not then a thumbs down. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. If you want to see more of this, then comment. My name is Dapadordo and until next time, have a smashing day.